So welcome everyone. It's the top of the hour and I'm going to go ahead and get started. We are delighted that you're all here and if you have a chance, um, go ahead and say hello in the chat box and tell us your greatest challenge. And Barbara, I can relate. Your challenge is working long hours without a break. Um, hear you there. Staying focused is another challenge. So thrilled that you're all here and taking a break to be with us. And we are going to get started um, in the conversation about set for success. And this is around a relationship reset. So my name is Donna Brighton, and I am delighted to be with you here today. Um, I was sharing with uh, my team right before we got started how excited I am to talk about this topic because I had just done, it was a, a session for Association Forum on leadership and influence. And we actually had a really long conversation about the topic we're covering today. And that is around um, resetting your relationships. So love that you're all here. Thanks for um, weighing in on the chat and we're going to be asking for audience participation. And we're going to actually start um, with a little poll. So for all of you out there, I would love to hear, um, are you accustomed to working from home or not? Um, is this something that you've been doing for much of your career? Is it brand new to you? Or have you worked in the office, some at home? So just curious for all of you out there, um, what your experience is in working remotely or working virtually. So it looks like most people um, participating today have had a blend of um, doing both uh, work from home as well as work in an office. About 80% of you. And for some of you, this is brand new. So wonderful, just curious, um, would love to hear from you again in the chat. If you have any questions, feel free to be posting them. So our focus, um, we thought we'd try something new. So I'm going to share 30 minutes of very helpful content for you. Then we're going to jump into an opportunity for connection if you're interested. So if it makes sense to stick around and you have the time, we're going to give you a link and we're going to open up a Zoom meeting room. And that's going to give us a chance to just connect, catch up, and um, have a conversation. So we've never tried that before and would love for you to join um, if that works for you and can stick around. So we're covering these three things around an approach to reset your relationships, different uh, communication methods and tools, and then you're going to get an agenda that goes through all of this content that you can use to help you in your relationship reset. So before I share with you what those three steps are, why does this even matter? Well, back to the conversation that I had with the individuals in the association forum course on leadership and influence. What we talked about is that there can get to be a point in your working relationships where um, there's a conflict or something has occurred that's preventing you from working at your best with other people. Now, the reason that this relationship reset conversation matters right now is because every single one of us is working differently with the collection of team members um, that we need to, to deliver work with. And it's not just about the fact that we may be working remotely or working virtually. The other challenge is that there's a lot going on in our lives beyond just getting our work done. Um, so this morning, I just did a, a workshop for a team of managers on the impact of change and they had a lot of change going on in their organization but on top of that each and every one of us are dealing with this external change of COVID-19 and so that's absorbing a lot of our mental space and making it quite frankly a challenge to focus and I know some of you identified that as um, one of your challenges right so you're home there's a lot going on I spoke with another individual who shared that he had a situation um, he and his wife were both working from home and had three small children like under the age of seven so we're all dealing with really different situations and that's why right now a relationship reset conversation is really important so here's the steps. First of all, before you have the conversation, my encouragement is to begin by pausing and reflecting on what you want to accomplish. 
So here's the interesting thing. A lot of times in communication, we just think about, okay, I need to tell the person this, or I need to ask a question, but that's not sufficient. So one of the, one of the things you want to remember is in effective communication, you as the communicator have an intent or a reason to have the conversation. So get clear on that. What result or outcome do you want to have? And then once you're clear on that, you need to make sure when you're having the conversation that the intent actually matches the impact. So it's really essential, this is step number one, is when you're resetting your relational context, start with why. What matters to you? What do you want to achieve? And quite simply, the way I frame this is I want to have a conversation to understand how I can work as effectively as possible with this other person, you know, so it's like, hey, how do we work together successfully? That's generally um, the intent. So figure out what that is going to be for you. So that's step number one. Step number two is preparing for success. So once you're clear on the conversation you want to have, why you want to have it, then these are some things for you to consider in preparation. Number one, what's the context? So what's currently going on in the context of your relationship? Um, referencing back to the discussion I had with the participants in my workshop, some of them had some difficult conversations, or I should not say difficult conversations, but the relational context was difficult. One person in particular had an, a team member that didn't report directly to them that wasn't getting their work done. So they were assigned to accomplish some things. They weren't getting them accomplished. And they were, and you know, the participant was saying, I don't know how to address this. What do I do? So as a result, um, the first thing in preparing for success is you need to consider what's the context that you're going to go into this conversation with. And um, the next thing, um, and you'll see in the agenda, is that you want to start um, at a personal level in terms of understanding the other individual that you're um, resetting the relationship with. So in preparation, getting ready for success, you're going to not only want to know the context that currently exists in the relationship, but also you're going to pause and take a minute to get to know each other once you have the conversation. So it's great to have questions you're going to ask the other person, but then my question to you is, what are you going to share about yourself? What does that person need to know about you to work successfully together? So um, for those of you who um, know the working uh, context here at Brighton Leadership Group, um, Scott Belke and I work very closely together, and there's times where his communication style is very direct and very succinct, and my communication style is um, a little bit lengthier and filled with more details. So it's a matter of different styles, and it's really helpful um, as you're explaining um, the way to work together is if you know your style so you can share that with the other person and where there could be potential conflicts. So for people who communicate in a very short, rapid fire way, that works for them. But for other people, they might get confused. So the opportunity in preparing for success is get prepared for self-disclosure so the person that's working with you not only um, learns more about you, but how to work with you. Then consider expectations and how you're going to follow up on the conversation. So these are all elements of getting prepared. And I'm going to talk a bit more about expectations. So you, before the conversation, are going to reflect on what's important for you in being successful in this working relationship. And you bring that into the conversation so that once you talk, you're not only finding out from the other individual what matters to them, but you can share what's useful for you. So here are some examples of some of the things you might want to cover. Um, information about yourself, what your style is, um, uh, what your rhythms are, you know, are you a late, a late night person? So they're going to probably get lots of email messages from you as you work into the evening. Are you a morning person? You know, what kind of what's your, what's your working approach, style, etc. And then I talked a little bit about, you know, the difference between Scott and I. He has a very abbreviated style in his communication and I'm more detailed in my communication. So what's your working style and your rhythm? You know, are you, are you an intense 
action-oriented person? Or are you more reflective in your working style? Recognizing differences like that can help you um, address potential conflicts that might come up, some, some friction spots, if you will. Um, another thing to consider is listening cues. And um, I put that in there in terms of preparing for success because what I want you to consider is how do you, in the course of this conversation, remind yourself of the importance of listening? So whether that's a card that you put in front of yourself that, write, that you write listen on or um, whatever that might look like for you, what's something you can do that gives you a cue to be paying attention and actively listening to the person you're having the conversation with? So a couple other things I'll just touch on in setting expectations. What are your thoughts around communication, frequency, method, um, brevity or detail? How much information do you need from this other individual? What about decision making? Who has decision making authority and are you expecting to be involved, considered, consulted? What are your expectations there? Um, number nine is interesting because especially in today's um, pressure-filled, intense uh, working environment because of what we're all going through together, recognition and appreciation are more important than ever. And different people have um, kind of different styles. Some people um, appreciate a written note, some people appreciate it verbally, but everybody needs to be recognized and appreciated. And I know there's some leaders that I've heard from that are like, you know, why do I need to appreciate anybody? If they're doing their job, then that's what they're supposed to do. Um, and I would suggest um, that's not the case, that we all need appreciation and encouragement. And in this conversation, the question for the other individual is, how can I support you by recognizing and appreciating you? What, what do you, what matters to you? And then be prepared to share that for yourself as well. So these are all different ideas um, for you in terms of considering what you expect and that enables you to be better prepared to share it with the other person. All right, so step number two, expectations. Here's a couple warnings. So I mentioned the importance of listening. And these are two quotes that I think are fantastic. This first one, I'm going to read it, and you're reading it faster than me, but it says, to effectively communicate, we must realize that we're all different in the way that we perceive the world, and we need to use this understanding that we all see it differently as a guide to our communication with others. So again, back to setting expectations, we need to recognize whoever we're engaging with sees things totally different than we do and be prepared to take the time to listen and understand. So that brings me to my second quote. And this again gets into the importance of listening. And that is the biggest communication problem is that we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. So I encouraged all of you to put some listening cues together for yourself. And the listening isn't just hearing, not just listening to reply, but listening to understand. And what could that look like for you? So you have, number one, decided why this conversation needs to happen. What is your intent? Number two, you've set your expectations in terms of what you need from the conversation and what matters to you in this working relationship. And so the third thing that you're going to do is just have the conversation. And remember in that quote, we all see things differently. And as a result, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to the context. Because if you're each seeing a situation or a working expectation from a different vantage point, then you're not going to be able to work successfully together. So this is the opportunity in this relationship reset to have the conversation with whomever it is and find out from them what they need from you to be successful and you share with them what you need to be successful. All right, so any questions about that? Have any of you had experience in 
doing a relational reset conversation. And again, the purpose of this now is for all of you who are having these challenges, like I can't focus because there are so many of us at home. I've got pets and animals and more people around than I know what to do with. If that's you, then reality check, you're not going to be able to focus like you used to. I mean, maybe you can put some headphones on and, you know, hide out in the closet. But in today's crisis situation where there's so much absorbing our attention, the reality is that focus is in short supply. So that ties into the relational reset conversation. If you're working with your team and you've got a lot, a lot to accomplish, recognize that maybe people can't keep up with the pace that they, that they were keeping up with in the past. So um, some challenges that people have shared with um, are just getting back into the groove of working from home and finding a schedule. So acknowledging that, that's another, you're right. And this is an opportunity for um, a reset in the expectation also. For example, what hours are you going to be available? So is, um, are you expecting you and your colleague both to be available all the time through working hours or just at certain points in time? Another, um, another reset in these crazy times is what's the expectation regarding when you're going to get back to the person? So is somebody expecting you to be responsive immediately? Because if you're, you know, making dinner or lunch for the family or whatever else is going on, maybe your degree of responsiveness won't be the same. So all of those things um, are really, really essential as you're considering this relationship reset conversation. So I talked about um, how do you have the conversation? And, um, and Greg, I love what you said here. The challenges in dealing with our, our current working situation is that people are coming into meetings much more distracted and it's hard to bring focus and energy into a meeting. Absolutely true. And um, Jody, great comment there. Seek first to understand and then be understood. Yes. So as you're listening, um, make sure you understand the other person's situation. Um, possibly they're not, you know, they're not delaying delivering to you what they need to on purpose. It's just they've got other things going on in their life. So having that conversation helps you understand their context and reset um, when you can, you know, when you're going to actually receive things from them and when they're going to get back to you and how they're going to respond to you. Um, so we're going to talk about technology and some, some different considerations. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. What method do you think would be best to use when you're having a reset conversation? So would you want to do it over chat? or an instant message tool, um, having a phone texting conversation, sending an email, having a conference call or video conference. So just curious, if you were thinking about having this relational reset conversation, what tool do you think would be best? So I'm hearing probably video is the way to go. I would, I would agree with you, video. Because with the video, you're going to get the most clues by actually being able to see the other person. Face-to-face um, -face is always ideal, but unfortunately, in our world of social distancing, we can't do that. But video conference is going to be the best opportunity for you to really engage and understand where is that person at? What's going on? You know, as Greg mentioned earlier, we're coming into conversations really distracted. So if you're interacting with somebody, you can pick things up by seeing them that you wouldn't necessarily pick up if you were just listening to them on the phone. Now, I did have a question in the chat where um, the question came in, how do you make sure that you affirm somebody that you're listening, actively listen to them when you're on a phone call and you don't want to talk over them. So have you ever had that experience? I know I have. So you're talking on the phone and you're doing, uh-huh, mm, mm-hmm, 
making those kinds of noises or even trying to verbally affirm that they're that you're listening to the person so some suggestions is um, get comfortable with silence because sometimes people just need a moment or two to gather their thoughts and they're really not complete. And this gets back to where I recommended having some listening clues. I probably need this myself sometimes where I do get really excited about a reply or a question or something. And actively listening means pausing and truly giving the other person the floor. Another way that you can help the other person understand whether you are truly listening to them is by repeating the last couple words of what they just shared and then pausing. And the value of that is it gives the person a bridge to continue the conversation if that's useful to them, if they have something additional they want to share with you. So perhaps you've asked um, in your relationship reset conversation, maybe you've asked the individual um, that you're talking with, hey, you know, what communication method um, do you want to use whenever we need to resolve issues? And, um, and maybe they had never thought about it before. And they're like, well, just send me an email. And then instead of jumping in and saying, okay, great, and asking your next question, you might say, so an email would be best um, whenever we're resolving issues, and pause. And just by restating either the last couple words or what they just said, it helps ensure that you're truly getting the answer and giving the person that, that thinking time. So, <laughs> yeah, Kate makes the point verbal affirmation can mess up the interaction uh, sometimes because especially in the technology enabled world, microphones can switch between people. So that's something to be careful of. And I will confess it's something that I'm working on as well, trying to not have so many affirming words in between my um, as I'm listening, because that can be distracting to the person. So there's times where I'm feeling overly energetic and enthusiastic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. You know, making those kinds of noises. And even though I'm feeling excited, it's not useful to the person you're listening to. So be cautious and be careful um, in your affirmation and ensure that you are pausing and being quiet and giving space. That's one of the best things that you can do. And Jody mentioned that's a great point. If you're on video, you can use nonverbal cues um, with eye contact as well as nodding your head to help people see that you're actually engaged and paying attention. Um, a tip for video conversations um, if you, I don't know what your camera setup is, many people are using a laptop that has a camera in it. And that's fine. But the problem can be is, you know, your eyes are dropping down to where the person's um, face is and you're trying to look there. But then when they're looking at you, they don't see their that they don't see your eyes. So a way you can overcome that you can actually get a separate camera and then use a gooseneck. There's a um, I can we can put the resources in the follow up email of the technology that we use. But you can use the camera on a bendable device that enables you to put the person's picture right behind the camera. And if you do that, it's almost like you're looking at the person and it's keeping you visually connected with that individual versus looking off in the distance where you're looking at them on your screen and not in person. So um, pros and cons, we all agreed that video conference is going to be the best alternative for a relational reset conversation. One of the tools that we're going to send out is the relationship reset and in it are all the different categories that we talked about and things for you to consider as you're planning for that conversation. Um, my suggestion to you in inviting the conversation, I wouldn't get into a lot of detail, meaning, hey, you know, we need to reset our relationship because this isn't working and that's not working. That would not be productive. My suggestion to you is um, invite the conversation in a positive way, which is just, hey, I'd love to make sure that we are working as successfully as possible together. That would be how I would encourage you to invite the conversation. And then as far as the agenda, I've had people ask, should I actually send out this agenda? You could do that. 
But I would recommend just leave it as is and use the agenda, customize the agenda in a way that works for you and use it as your reference point. Now there's pros and cons. Um, I know for individuals who tend towards introversion on the personality scale, their preference is to come prepared. So if you give them some thoughts in advance, like, hey, I'd like to know your preferences on how to communicate or um, how frequently you wanna hear from me or status updates or how we resolve issues, all those things, um, that will enable them to come to the meeting more thoughtfully prepared. So you need to understand who it is that you're um, going to be resetting your relationship with and decide how much of the agenda to share with them. So in addition to um, reviewing expectations, the other thing you want to make sure in this um, conversation is you get clear about the work that's being done and what done looks like. Um, there's so many times where I've experienced uh, a team working together and one person thinks, you know, done. So, hey, we're going to get a new web page set up. So done means that there's text on a web page. For somebody else, it could mean, no, we have that plus an autoresponder plus, plus, plus. So getting clear that both of you understand what your, what work looks like and what done looks like is really important. And one, um, one other recommendation, anybody who's listening who's a consultant, where this uh, document actually originated from was as I was um, transitioning project to project and working with a variety of different people, for me, it was a resource I created myself because I felt in order to work well with my client, I wanted to make sure I understood these things about them. And um, it comes from a situation, so I was managing a large team of consultants coast to coast, and there was one incredibly talented consultant on my team, and I heard from um, the client, he, client site that he was at, the, um, the individual contacted me and said, you need to get him out of here. He is just not working out. And I um, asked a couple questions, you know, like, what's going on? What's, what's the problem? And in that situation, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the individual's work, but the client was expecting regular conversation. So in her mind, she wanted to hear from, from my team member on a daily basis, and his expectation was that he would only contact her if there was an issue. And that clash almost resulted in him um, getting removed from the project, but we were able to resolve that once we understood that that was a relational flashpoint and um, we took care of that. So that's where the um, document originally came from. And I've seen the value of it beyond just in a project setting that for anybody who works with another person, it's so important that we're clear upfront on how we work together. And one other quick story that connects to why I think this um, topic and this content is so important. Um, there was a story that I read in the Wall Street Journal, and it was about a new leader who had come into an organization. And he said, he actually shared with his entire team information about his personality. So whatever assessments he had done, he would explain, this is who I am, this is my working style, and this is what's most important to me. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Because imagine that when a new leader steps into their role, the first thing everybody's trying to figure out is, you know, what are their expectations? And so he took that completely out of the equation by upfront getting super clear, here's how you need to communicate with me, here's my working style. He shared everything with them and I just thought that was fantastic. So that's my suggestion to all of you. Take the time, reset your relationships with your team members, your boss, your colleagues, because right now, while everybody's working in a really different context, they need to know how to work well with you, and you need to know how to work well with them. So in our last minute, um, these are our next steps for you. We thought it would be really fun to um, join you every Wednesday. So we're going to do Wednesday webinars. We've got Tuesday's tips. We're going to do Wednesday's webinars. We're just going to do a 30-minute quick little um, overview of something fun and interesting and then invite you to join us um, via Zoom meetings. So Miriam's going to put the Zoom meetings link in the chat for anybody who's able to stay on and join us. You can do that. 
um, but we'll be sending you a follow-up email message and in it we'll give you the link for next week we're going to talk about thriving through change so i'd love to hear from all of you um, if there's um, something that you're doing join me next week and share it with everybody who's on but we're going to talk about how to thrive through this change and and look for opportunities in the midst of this tragedy and crisis. Like, how can we pivot and do something different? So that's what next Wednesday's webinar is going to be about. You're going to get an email that gives you this, the document I mentioned. That's the relational reset for virtual work success. And your action is just to consider who do you need to be having a conversation with. And then your last step, if you haven't already taken a look at virtual work success, um, we assembled a quick little checklist. It's um, pretty simple, but just as a refresh, I know many of you have been working at home for a long time, so it might just be a review, um, but a chance for you to validate that you're doing all the things um, that would be helpful to you to be successful as you work remotely, work virtually. So that's the end of our 30 minutes. It's absolutely delightful. Miriam's giving you some guidance in the chat. So um, the Zoom link is there if you want to pick that up and she's given you some thoughts. Thanks for joining us. I really hope we see you again next Wednesday. And if you can stick around for our conversation session, would love that. So we're going to move on now and have time to connect. And just a quick um, reason what we're doing. We're going to have a chat, whatever that looks like, whatever you're interested in, join us, have a conversation if you can. And if not, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Thanks everyone for joining. It was delightful to be with you today.